Hey everyone, happy Thanksgiving. I always like to try and do something fun uh, this time of the year and certainly you can't help but reminisce on the, the memories that we had making the films and all of the people that we got to work with and certainly all of the fans and all of the interactions that we've had in between in the years since the first movie came out. So I thought what would be fun is to open up this box that I have behind me and go through some of the memories and keepsakes that I've kept over the years since making the first one. So the first movie we made when we were in college in, in 2007, we had no idea that it would go on to you know get any kind of release, let alone develop a cult following. So uh, you know it was a lot of fun over the years to sort of see that Thanks Killing would get mentioned in Fangoria magazine or um, you know just different publications and different things online. And certainly then also we kept some of the stuff and we've kept a lot of the props from the first movie and, and from the third as well. Most of those are in storage, and I'm not going to you know, have those to share with you guys today, although the last thing I'll show you is the coolest prop from either of the movies, um, and I do have that with me. But I've kept a lot of stuff, original screeners and you know, business cards from people we worked with, shooting schedules, shot lists, and, and sketches and stuff like that. And to be honest, I'm not entirely sure what all is in there, so we're going to kind of figure this out together. So uh, let's go ahead and open it up, and I'll kind of... Uh, pull items out and we'll go one by one through them and I'll kind of explain, you know, why uh, I kept that, what the meaning behind it is and, you know, how it factored into uh, the films known as Thanks Killing. Okay, so this is going to be totally out of order, but first up is, <clears throat> this is pretty cool. So, like I said, most of the actual props from the film we have in storage or have been sold since the movie was made. Um, this actually is a little printout that we did of the prayer that was read at the end of Thanks Killing 1. So at the end when they're sitting around the dinner table, my stepdad Jeff, who was the, um, the character reading that when the family's there, he didn't know this offhand, so we actually printed out the prayer and had it on his lap. So he was reading, um, you know, for the scene, and it looked like he was bowing his head in, you know, saying a prayer, but in reality, he was actually looking down and reading on his lap, and this is the original piece of paper that he used uh, to read from. Okay, these are a couple of uh, posters that we made. This was mostly to promote the Kickstarter campaign for Thanks Killing 3. So the irony is, is that QR codes have made a big comeback since the pandemic and, you know, around that time frame. But at the time, QR codes, this was 2011, you know, were kind of a new thing. The idea of scanning this code with your phone was not really, you know, that was a new technology at that point. And it, then it kind of, you know, seemed to drop off the face of the earth there for 10 years or so. But um, I believe if you scanned this, it went to the Kickstarter page for Thanks Killing 3. And I don't remember where, I mean, we gave these out to a bunch of Kickstarter backers and we were just trying to do anything to drum up press at the time. But I believe that these, we kind of hung around in odd places or would staple them to telephone poles, seeing if we could sort of fabricate any kind of, uh, you know, viral campaign or get anybody to pick up on it uh, that wasn't already aware of the first film. This is a postcard for the movie that doesn't exist, Thanks Killing 2. And this on the back here just says Thanks Killing 2 in black and white because it costs more money to print color both sides. So we were saving money uh, and did black and white on one side and color on the other side. I believe what we did is made these for, I don't remember if this was to promote the Kickstarter camp. No, it wouldn't have been because we hadn't revealed yet that there was no Thanks Killing 2 and that we were gonna skip to part three. So I believe these were actually made as props for Thanks Killing 3. And I think it's one of those things that you can see at the beginning of Thanks Killing 3 when they're burning stuff. They're burning all kinds of merch from Thanks Killing 3 trying to wipe, Thanks Killing 2 trying to wipe that movie off the face of the earth. So. Uh, this was some sort of, you know, promotional material that was fake as a prop for Thanksgiving 3. Um, and we had, you know, a stack of these made because you really needed to fill up a big space for that burn pile. Here's another postcard. Uh, this one was to promote Thanksgiving 1. So we made these, let's see if, so saving even more money, there's nothing on the back there. Um, this was, I believe, after, well, yeah, so Thanks Killing 1 was first released in 2008 
as a DVD that Kevin and I printed and sold from our uh, apartment. And I have that original, you know, copy and I'll show you guys that in a little bit. But so a year later or sometime within that, that year of 2008, Gravitas Ventures, who was just getting into what's now very commonly known as VOD, but at the time video on demand was not really a common thing. So we sort of had to be explained what that meant. But Gravitas had a deal with Warner Brothers, which is why you see a little Warner Brothers logo here. And basically they would put their movies onto all these digital platforms. And so we made this postcard after it had got a release through Gravitas Ventures on the VOD platforms. And we probably just made this to include in screeners or to send out to publications to try and get interviews or any kind of press. This was just a little hand me out type thing that, um, that people could take home and, you know, to promote the movie. But uh, thankskillingmovie.com. I don't believe that exists anymore. Amazon.com is funny because you would never <laughs> put the .com there. Uh, iTunes, Netflix, when it was originally on Netflix Digital. Blockbuster, now that's funny. Uh, and, uh, of course, Warner Brothers Shop. So this was a, uh, not a postcard, a business card, sorry, that we printed um, a postcard-like design on it but it was even smaller. You can see the comparison to the postcard. So business card size. And on the back, thankskillingmovie.com, the ultimate low budget experience about a homicidal turkey axing off kids made for 10 grand, gobble, gobble. Pre-order the DVD online. So I believe this is prior to Gravitas Ventures. And what this is, is Kevin and I had made, uh, printed a thousand copies of Thanksgiving because we couldn't find distribution that we liked and we had zero contacts or any you know ideas for how to get a movie out there so we were just throwing everything at the wall and this was we had made a website we had made a we'd printed these thousand dvds of thanks killing on artwork that we designed on the dvd menus all of it we did in-house and i believe this was again just a little bit of promo material to send out to either fans or people who would pre-order the movie or ultimately what we were trying to do was get, you know, websites like Dread Central or Bloody Disgusting or Shock Till You Drop at the time or any of those kinds of sites that cover this stuff, uh, trying to get them to write reviews and cover Thanksgiving to promote this website, which ultimately sold those first thousand copies. And so I believe this was a, again, a little take home type of thing that was uh, this artwork um, which is kind of cool because it doesn't really exist anywhere else. The turkey, this is the cover for the first movie, but it doesn't exist on black, uh, a black background. So it kind of works well there like that. Okay, next we've got a copy of Scars Magazine. Uh, you can see Thanks Killing is right there on the cover. Uh, the cover's ripped off because at one point this was framed. And usually for these kinds of things, I'll buy a second copy that doesn't get destroyed if you need to cut something up to frame it. Um, I had totally forgotten about this one, but looking back on it, I was reminded how cool of an article they did here. Uh, there's this big spread that they did on Thanksgiving, and we'll have to look at the date on the cover, but I believe that this was, you know, long before this movie had any kind of, uh, awareness around it. Um, so they kind of, you know, took a leap to be able to do this kind of an article before there was any cult following, and I believe it's mostly an interview with me. Um, which would be interesting to read uh, all these years later to see if what I was saying is at all applicable still, um, or if it just kind of feels like, uh, actually, if anything, more accurate because it was closer proximity. Uh, I mean, this, some of these pictures are hilarious, the stunt photo or the stunt head. And the funny thing is, is that, of course, all of these pictures are either just frame grabs from the movie or some kind of low budget uh, digital camera. We didn't actually have any kind of stills photography really on that film. So pretty cool that they, they did this whole layout. Here's another uh, sticker, again, using the QR code in that old website. Um, this was again used to promote the Thanks Killing 3 Kickstarter campaign, which was not called the Thanks Killing 3 Kickstarter because we didn't reveal that yet. So it was just called the Thanks Killing Sequel Kickstarter, I believe. But again, this, the difference is this is a sticker, so you can peel this off, stick it on. And we were encouraging, you know, we were giving this out to fans of the first movie who would write us on Facebook or Twitter, any way they could contact us 
And essentially, if somebody sent us their address, we would just mail them free stuff that they could either keep for themselves or use to promote. So we tried to create this little army um, of support around the movie as much as possible. Who knows how much that worked or not? I mean, I think that those things are sometimes hard to you know quantify, but ultimately you got to try everything when you're trying to get an independent film made. Um, but again, I believe the QR code led to the actual kickstarter.com slash, you know, thanks killing three page. And I believe one of the funniest things I remember about this is somebody actually took this and stuck it on a red box and sent us a picture on the actual glass of the red box unit, which <laughs> probably classifies as vandalism. Uh, so uh, not necessarily what we were trying to support. However, it, it did lead to a, a funny photo. This is a letter that um, looks like it was enclosed in the copies of the screeners that we sent out for the first Thanksgiving. So it just says enclosed as a screener copy of Thanksgiving and a few promotional goodies. Feel free to review the screener or promote in any way. Um, you know, reach out to us if you want to conduct anything else. We also had a press kit and it has the link to where you can uh, get that. So Thanksgiving arrives on DVD through Amazon on, no on November 17th. So that, I, I didn't know that offhand, that's when we actually released the first movie on DVD, November 17th, 2008. So old that I actually, my signature has changed since then. Um, but yeah, this would have been an original letter that we had mailed out to, you know, again, like I said, any, any publication that we could find that would accept screeners, mostly in the horror genre, that we thought might be able to promote or review the movie. We'll jump into something a little different. Uh, this is a program from Thanks Killing the Musical, and I believe, let's see, this is the Seattle one. So this was the very first uh, screening of Thanks Killing the Musical. It went on to play in, I don't remember offhand, five to ten different cities um, over the course of a few years that it ran. And this was the first one. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was the only one that uh, Kevin or I saw live. And uh, we made the special trip out there, and it was a ton of fun. So it's cool because, you know, they did their own artwork. So there's Johnny the Jock, and here's, that's Darren with glasses, Billy, I'm guessing Al, Allie, and Kristen. Um, and so, you know, your typical uh, program for a play or a musical. But, um, but the musical was very special. If you got to see it, you were one of the lucky ones, and everybody who we had spoken to, uh, raved about it, including Kevin and I. We were both very big fans of what uh, what these guys did. Okay, here is something interesting. This, all you can see is just a loose piece of paper. What this is, so in comparison, here is uh, the main poster uh, in DVD. This is a screener, and I'll show you some of those in a sec. Uh, the main poster in DVD for Thanks Killing 1, right here, and this right here, uh, so you might be wondering what's that because it's kind of more yellow and this is a lot more orange. The layout is very similar. You can see there's an underline to the title here. It's not there. Uh, looks like, yeah, we added some more blood, spruced up the Photoshop job as much as possible given our, uh, you know, 20 year old Photoshop skill set, which was pretty rough as you can see. And considering we didn't actually have high quality pictures, I think this photo that's on the DVD was a picture my mom took of me with the turkey puppet on my arm in our garage. And it wasn't meant to be used as anything other than just my mom was like, here, snap a picture. And I was probably, you know, annoyed that she wanted to do it. And then lo and behold, that photo ends up uh, becoming one of the main promo photos. But what this is right here is I believe us testing out the design for the DVD. So we had already designed it in Photoshop because you can see it's pretty similar except for the background and the blood like I pointed out. But I believe we just printed this at home on our printer to try and see how the sizing was working and when you slipped this into the plastic case were we liking you know the direction that it was going. And ultimately we went more orange which I think was better. Uh, a whiter font so it just pops more. Um, and just some, you know, alterations with the blood, and like I said. But this would have been probably, I guess technically you could say this right here is the very first rendition of Thanks Killing as a poster or DVD and the original print of what that first, uh, you know, design looked like.
so you can see it in a very in an even more rough form than what the the final version is so while we're at it why don't we go ahead and look at these screeners here so both of these are screeners there's small differences that i'll show you um, you can tell the print job is just a little different we were printing these probably either at home but I'm guessing it was probably just at Kinko's because we didn't have a, a color printer that it would have run through the color ink too quick or it might not have looked that good. So there's a little screener watermark here. This ultimately is basically the final artwork for the DVD, um, the first version of the DVD because the, there's, there's a few versions and I'll go through all of that. But the initial version that we did, this is the final art for that. Uh, except for this watermark here and this not for resale screening purposes only. So you can see if you open it up, this version, the difference is there's no back to it. So I'm not sure if we were sending ones out that didn't have a back um, or if this was like we rushed a screener together to go to one of the film markets or to get it to some publication that needed something while we were working on the more, you know, uh, advanced version. But this is literally just one of those paper things that you could have, you know, bought uh, one of those, you know, we had those DVD stamping papers um, for screening only, media inquiries, there's our email. This is kind of funny, a little disclaimer. Do not attempt to copy or digitally distribute the enclosed screener or the killer turkey will drink your blood like cranberry sauce. This is funny for multiple reasons. One, because we're just constantly poking fun at the whole process of this movie and uh, not just the content of the actual film but when we actually marketed it and as we sent around screeners we wanted it to be a fun experience that anybody who covers movies would sort of maybe be surprised by you know the little touches something like that that just you know you're not used to seeing when movies take themselves so seriously sometimes but also the killer turkey and we capitalized killer turkey that's because then we didn't have a name for the turkey. We just called him the killer turkey. Or I think in the film they say turkey, but later on then we kind of stuck with the, the T-U-R-K-I-E spelling in, in naming him turkey, but we did not have that in the beginning. It may not be technically complete. Sound color and overall picture quality will be finished for the final. So I don't even know what this would look like. It would be really interesting. It would be the final film in terms of the scenes. There weren't deleted scenes or anything like that. However, maybe some of the visual effects or the title sequence or score might not be there. Same exact thing here, except this is the more complete version. So now we actually have a printed DVD. And I don't, I don't know if this is, I don't think this is the DVD art that's on the actual disc for the original release. I think this is, again, a special screening one. And you can see that we've numbered them. This is 64. So... I'm guessing that we maybe made 100 of these, you know, maybe 75, and I don't know why I have number 64. Um, but this artwork was done ourselves, and I'm pretty sure we printed this at home and stuck it onto the DVD-R that we would have burnt ourselves. The back is different, blank here. This one is filled in, but it's kind of funny because we literally, the final thing doesn't say seeking distribution. I forget what it says there, but we kind of built that into the artwork Again, just making it a little bit more of an interactive, involved kind of process as opposed to just, um, you know, just sending out the, the stuff that you're used to seeing. Um, appearing on horror sites, Fangoria and the hit show TMZ. So um, this must have come sometime after we had already, you know, gotten the movie out there a little bit. But, you know, its distribution evolution was still continuing along. Okay, these are some pins that we had made. Uh, I remember we had a few different batches of these made over the years. Sometimes they were to promote a screener or you know the DVD release or Kickstarter. Other times we just had stuff on hand that like I said, we would just send out if people gave us their address because we just wanted to promote the movie and generate any kind of fan following um, possible. So you can see like that gobble gobble motherfucker. Um, there's a few, you know just different versions of that. This one is kind of like Devil's Rejects sort of style uh, font treatment there. Um, the you know just the the original turkey. So I only have maybe one copy of each of these left because the rest were given out to to fans over the years. While we're looking at small things. Here is an original eye 
uh, from one of the turkey puppets. Now, I'm fairly positive this is not from the first Thanks Killing because of the size of it, and we'll see that turkey puppet later. Um, this was a bobcat eye, was what we chose to go with. Bird eyes, you know, didn't really look evil and uh, didn't look like what we wanted them to look like. So this was a, actually a bobcat eye, and it, you know, it had a specific kind of coloring to it that we liked. But these are just glass. You can see it's just kind of hollow there. All right, this is a fun one. This is, <laughs> I took out her contact info here, but this is Wanda Lust's uh, business card that she gave us when we were shooting the opening scene of Thanks Killing One with her. And uh, you know, her website, you can check it out. I have no idea what's on there these days. Um, but this was pretty funny uh, and definitely a worthy keepsake. Okay, here we have a copy of Maxim magazine, and uh, this one was really cool because, you know, obviously Maxim is a very big publication, so this was everywhere, Barnes and Noble and all of that stuff. And whereas Scars magazine, as cool as that was, was a much more niche sort of magazine, and so you had to really sort of get that one on the website. But this one was everywhere, and so they had a hidden horrors article. We did not know they were doing this. I believe that a friend of ours just texted us and said, hey, uh, you guys should check out the new issue of Maxim Magazine. They've covered Thanks Killing. And this was done way after the film's release um, in the past 10 years, I'd say. And uh, anyway, so there's kind of a hidden horrors uh, article. And then they break it down by subgenres within hidden horrors. But then this one here for Thanks Killing, they've got best movie featuring foul killers. So it's Thanks Killing and Poultrygeist, uh, go figure. Those two always get paired up. Um, but, uh, you know, it's not a big article, it's just this tiny little blurb, but still, nonetheless, it was pretty cool to see that ridiculous puppet that we had made in this movie that is, you know, on the same page, sharing the same page as, as Dog Soldiers uh, and then, you know, all of these other horror filmmakers. Because, you know, the thing is to remember is this movie was made for $3,500 by two 19-year-olds during summer break in college. So for that to end up in here, however you slice it, is, uh, it was a big success and certainly uh, was, you know, pretty, uh, pretty mind-blowing to us to see this type of thing. Here's another paper here. And uh, what this is is actually interesting. Thank you for pre-ordering Thanks Killing. Um, so what this is, is don't just don't get too beaked, freaked out. I mean, again, we're having fun with this. At this point, Thanks Killing is available on demand. Um, it's being covered by Bloody Disgusting, Arrow in the Head. Um, all of this for a movie that costs $3,500. Thank you for your support. So what this is, I believe, is a letter and it came with a little business card that we saw earlier and it came with a button that we also saw this was enclosed in every copy that somebody who had pre-ordered the movie got so those pre-orders we only had a thousand copies and i think we maybe sold i don't know two to five hundred in pre-orders and then the rest were just put up on amazon fulfillment that essentially amazon would say hey we need 25 copies we would send them a box of 25 copies. They would keep it in their warehouse. And when somebody, when a customer would order one, Amazon would, would send the order out instead of us sending in each individual order. But this was very rare if you had or have one of these because it meant you were essentially one of the first two to 500 people to ever see Thanks Killing, to ever buy Thanks Killing, to ever own one of those copies. And there's only a thousand of those in existence. But if you had this, it means you bought it directly from us on our website. And it may have even been less. This may have been like 100 people that got this. Um, Kevin and I signed it. And then, you know, this is just, again, us having fun with, with the fans down here. And now that I've seen Thanks Killing, I love the hell out of it and want to be cast in the sequel. Can't stop quoting that damn bird. Would prefer the running time to be one minute. Just gouged my eyes out. Obviously, you're not going to actually check this and mail it back to us. It's just, again, having fun with the process and, uh, and I guess, keeping a lighthearted tone um, to the entire thing, uh, even from the correspondence that you would get from us. So here is a, definitely a prized possession. This is the original sketch I did of the turkey that I would then sculpt the, the puppet out of clay based on this. This was inspired by the Skeksis from Dark Crystal, which of course, you know, a lot of people have pointed out. 
Um, and I forget what other, I mean, I think it was a combination of looking at those and looking at actual turkeys and hawks and vultures and stuff like that, because a real turkey doesn't have a very menacing or, you know, cartoonish kind of look to its, its face. It doesn't translate that well. So I think vultures, turkey vultures had that, you know, this, this sharp beak and this like sinister grin and just you could imagine it translating better to a movie than a real turkey and so anyways this was the original sketch that i i did and then from here we took this and then i sculpted uh the turkey based on based on this drawing this is funny this was actually very recent from uh, i believe two years ago uh and in maybe 2020 there was a haunted drive through in los angeles that i went to uh, so yeah, it would have been during the pandemic. So we were kind of just in the car going through this drive through in a park. And uh, you kind of got, it was like a tasting menu. So when you bought a ticket, they would give you at each little pit stop, a little haunt along the way, you got some sort of a sampler of food. But one of the things was the thanks killing meatballs or the thanks killing veg balls. So that was pretty cool to see that um, Dawn of the Dip, Jack's Chilled Fall Crumble, Children of the Cornbread, uh, you know, Alfred Hitchcock ravioli. Some of the puns are better than others, but it was pretty cool nonetheless to see that they chose Thanksgiving as the theme for their, um, well, because it has cranberry sauce, so that's why. Fangoria. Uh, of course, if you are a horror fan and a movie that you made or were a part of ends up in this magazine, that would be a huge honor, and it was. This was prior to, I believe, Thanks Cor or Fangoria when they when they shut down. Now they're back, which is fantastic. But um, looks like, of all things, this is in the Twilight New Moon edition, which is uh, funny. But it wasn't a very big blurb here. It's just this little, um, I believe they're just talking about stuff that's coming up. Yeah, DVD chopping list. So it's just upcoming movies. But Thanks Killing got a picture, and, uh, and they mention it over here. Uh, as a an upcoming release so nonetheless not a lot of love and attention to it here but uh, still meant a lot to us here's another musical program this was from the uh, ohio the columbus ohio version of the musical and this one was special because ryan francis who played darren in the original thanks killing uh you know put, played his role again for the musical version so he reprised his role for the musical and was also a big part of helping produce it and put the, the musical on in the first place. But I believe this one went over really well. And, you know, they would have, uh, you know, you had to wear uh, almost like you're at SeaWorld or something. You had to wear plastic if you were in the front row because you were going to get sprayed with blood. Um, and uh, so you can see it's, again, it's just, you know, a little program. And I was not at this one. I believe these actually were tickets that my uh, my parents went to, and so they gave me their tickets and then this, uh, this program, but um, still pretty cool. Again, custom artwork for each of these, which was really cool, and you can see the credits are down there on the, the fence like that. This is funny, uh, country living. So I'm from Ohio, Thanks Killing was shot in Ohio. This is an Ohio magazine, but for whatever reason, <laughs> amidst the uh, you know countryside and farm and uh, everything going on here they did they did a little feature on they came from Ohio so local filmmakers in horror movies and uh, they picked pinpointed thanks killing so again this is the photo that's on the DVD you can see we flipped it the original I believe was this um, was facing this direction we flipped it for the DVD but uh, again, this was just this digital photo my mom took uh, sort of um, just in the moment that ended up being this big promotional uh, item. And so you can see the eye there, very much same exact style. It's just these ones are bigger because the puppets in Thanks Killing 3 were bigger than the first movie. This is cool. This is an original schedule from the first Thanks Killing. So you can see the handwriting here. This is Kevin's handwriting. And so I'm guessing this was something that was in his binder, his notebook. Uh, it's stained. It's got bits of dirt on it, which is awesome because it just makes it all that more, all the more authentic. 
Um, you know, and this is kind of a fairly standard movie schedule. I forget what the software is. Um, movie Magic, I believe, that we would have been using at the time. Maybe it was an Excel thing. I don't remember. But you can see that basically it's just saying day one, August 10th, Friday. So August 10th, 2007 was the very first day that we started filming for Thanksgiving. 12 p.m. call, so noon. And then you can see the cast, each, each, each cast member up here has a number assigned to them. And which is funny because Feather Cloud was a character in the original Mary. I don't even know who Mary is. Uh, some of these characters maybe had names in the script that didn't have a name in the film. Feather Cloud, that, there was an original opening scene that was different than what we filmed and that never got shot, but yet we had scheduled him. So basically all of that just goes to say is that things were you know, constantly changing even while we were filming the movie. So you can see day one, the very first scene, and I do remember this actually, interior Jeep Wrangler day, the very first stuff that we started shooting was when the kids are driving from university to before their car breaks down. And they're kind of going around the car and saying what they're thankful for. That was the very first stuff that we uh, started shooting, any of this, um, this Jeep driving stuff. And day two, so then lunch, more Jeep driving and, and dropping off of the dropping the kids off. Day two, the woods uh, insert sign. So that's the, the, you know, the Krawberg sign, Jeep and woods. So it's all of this when once the car breaks down and the, that rabbit flies onto the fire. That's what we shot day two. Day three, <laughs> exterior police station. That's funny because we definitely did not shoot in a police station. Originally, the sheriff was going to be in a police station, but we couldn't do that, so we just set it. We just used my dad's house at the time um, and just assumed that this is a sheriff who's working from home because the original Cheryl who brings him over the pot of coffee, that was supposed to be his secretary at the office at the station, but we ended up switching it to basically his wife, soon to be ex wife, and he's just kind of in between the, you know, uh, duty or working from home um, because we couldn't get a police station and we couldn't shoot in one certainly. Um, so pretty cool. You see this original schedule and then end of mid end of slash mid October. That's a note there because we came back after we filmed for the initial 11 days. We missed a few things. So we came back in October to get a few pickup shots and I believe that was the the final scene where the turkey goes onto the bonfire. There were other few few other inserts and in, in little things that we came back to shoot later on with uh, just a few of the cast members. But we, it looks like we were even acknowledging that we were going to have to get some pickups. This is a, uh, a hoodie. It actually didn't fit me the one I grabbed because there was just kind of a grab bag. But they made these for the uh, the Seattle version of Thanks Killing the Musical. And the logo is kind of imitating the Starbucks logo and coloring since it was in Seattle. Um, but pretty cool. Those guys, you know, had uh, had made these for the cast and crew and then, you know, gave us a few uh, to uh, to have as well. So I, I've kept this one rather than uh, wearing it over the years. Speaking of shirts, here is a uh, Gobble Gobble Motherfucker t-shirt. We had these made, I believe, in partnership with a print uh store in um, Colorado that my brother Mike had uh, hooked us up with um, but this was just a fun thing and you know we I, I think we debated would we you know basically uh, do some you know like a hashtag or asterisk down here to have a PG version of the the um, without actually using the word fucker um, but I think we ended up just going with this because we figured anybody that would want to wear that shirt anyways would probably prefer to see the real deal. A couple other quick things. This is a uh, fake Xbox game for Thanks Killing 2 that we made only as props to use in Thanks Killing 3. There was a postcard I showed earlier that was essentially, um, again, a fake promotional item. And we did that with these as well. And uh, and I think it was, why did we choose Xbox over PlayStation or just some other piece of merch? I think we just love the green, the neon green plastic case is so cool. Um, and I believe we were considering using that for the actual DVDs. Uh, and so we had got a small sample of these cases 
that, and I think we may have actually made some copies that did have this green case. So we had some on hand that we were testing the thanks killing artwork with. And then because it's, you know, that's what Xbox would use at the time of Xbox 360, we, uh, we were like, well, let's just make a fake game for it. And all you had to do was take the thanks killing two art we had and switch around to a, a green themed, but there isn't even a back to it. I think there is a back to some of the ones that we ended up filming in the movie. This was probably an initial prototype. This was not screen used uh, in Thanks Killing 3, and uh, I'm guessing this was just a prototype for us to test the dimensions of the artwork and how it looked against the green case. This tells you how old Thanks Killing is. This is a VHS that my mom had taped, I believe, from uh, when TMZ, yeah, because it's TMZ, uh, October 11th, 2007. TMZ did a little segment on Dead Body Guy and on their TV show at the time on cable or wherever it was. They, they on their segment, they mentioned Thanks Killing, and so my mom taped it onto their VCR. So. Even though this was at the tail end of VHS and uh, in VCRs, they were they were old school and still doing it. So uh, I have no idea if I'll ever use this. We have the clip is on our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash thankskilling if you want to see that TMZ clip. But uh, this is the origin of it, so that's pretty funny. Okay, so before we get to the grand finale, let's go through the origin of the releases on DVD. So, and I'll go through each one of these. Um, this right here, this one is still shrink wrapped. This is the original Thanks Killing, which is a limited edition. This is, we made a thousand copies of these that Kevin and I paid for um, and designed and printed ourselves. Well, not ourselves, we you know sent it out to a print company. There's a slip case. The lettering here is actually sort of embossed, so it's raised right there. Then inside is, uh, this one's sealed, so I don't want to open and break the seal, but inside is the orange cover version of the movie uh, that I've shown you before. Inside of here is this, I believe. I'm pretty positive that this is the version that's inside this slipcase. And so, again, only a thousand of these. The, the back is very different. The artwork completely changed on the next version, and basically, the difference is, is that what happened here is that we did not have a distributor at this point. This is in 2007 when we were selling these DVDs out of our closet and through our website, just trying to get the movie released and drum up any kind of publicity or press that we could. Uh, we knew nothing about distribution and we were learning as we went. Then in between these two, Gravitas Ventures, a distribution company comes along and they say, hey, let's release this on DVD. We can get it on streaming and see how it does. Now it starts to build up a little bit of a cult following just because it's in front of more people and there's more uh, chance for someone to see it. So then Gravitas had struck up a deal with another company called MVD and, Gra and they presented the thought of, hey, would you guys want to do a proper DVD release for this that doesn't just have a thousand copies, but we go wider with it and put it on, you know, put it on Amazon, get it into different the DVD stores that even existed at the time. And we said, yes, of course. And so we basically redid the whole artwork to have a goofier sort of tone to it that matched more, I think, just the tone of the movie and also just kind of played to what was already, what we were seeing was working about this. And so we kind of leaned into that with this one. So this came out in 2011. So 2011, Basically, this was 2008, so yeah, three years later was when this DVD came out. This is still the main one. If you buy a DVD for Thanks Killing um, that's not in this collection that I'll talk about, this is still the main artwork that you would get. There's never been another version since then. I'd love to do a Blu-ray uh, and to do an updated you know, cover and artwork and everything because this is certainly very dated and just this now on DVD and all this stuff like uh, you really feel that it's uh that it's dated at this point um but uh it worked for the time and you know uh that's where this one's origin story came from the back again we designed all of the artwork and did everything ourselves because you know not because we thought we could do a better job uh as you can see it's you know it is what it is 
Uh, it's because we couldn't afford to get other artists and people involved, uh, just like it says here, because we couldn't afford a rating. So again, having fun with it. We also had started to get some quotes and some things that we could use uh, on it. And clearly this uh, version here, as opposed to this version, this might tell you, hey, this is actually like trying to be a scary Thanksgiving themed uh, horror film. This is telling you to not take this movie seriously, which is much more accurate to the actual tone. Um, Thanks Killing 3 now, uh, the, again, same, this is the main DVD artwork that you would get for this. Um, you can see they both kind of have a similar style to it, even though the actual artwork, this time we did hire someone, Ralph Krauss, to do this 80s themed artwork, which we loved. But we also then, for its poster, didn't have this orange border and didn't have the warning and all of this other stuff, but we wanted the two to sort of match. So the font is actually different between the two releases. But this first movie to skip its own sequel, low budget experience, all of that stuff. In the end, we probably went way too much. There's way too much text on the cover of these things. But you get the idea that um, that they are, you know, in the same family. Um, again, very silly. Back to it. There's a lot more special features on Thanks Killing Three, just because we had more time and money and were way more aware of uh, distribution at this point. And so we were shooting stuff, uh, you know, as we went. And then we took the time to actually edit a lot of that together. But um, that's that. And so what this is, this is the, you know, you see the word complete there is in quotes because uh, as you know, there is no Thanks Killing 2. Between those, there's a gap. Doesn't exist. That's the plot of Thanks Killing 3. That's the joke, um, whether it works or not. But this is the... Uh, the collection of both movies. So all this is is literally just a cardboard slipcase for both of these. So these both are inside of here. You can see they're right in there. It's just these two discs inside of this slipcase. And the reason for that is essentially they wanted to um, just bundle them together and just take, it was, a, it was a low investment for the DVD company to make this uh, slipcase and bundle them together and then it could help them control inventory a little bit better. Um, so again, we designed all of this and gave them the art files. Uh, there's a warning on the back, which is kind of funny that there's no thanks killing too. And this is a picture of this really low budget, uh, cardboard cutout that we used for thanks killing, uh, three at the beginning of that movie. So this 2014, you can see, uh, thanks killing three came out in 2012, the DVD is 2013. So that's the evolution. We basically go. 2008, 2011, 2013, 2014. And that's all of the releases uh, so far. And even this is really just those two morphed together. Okay, last but not least, the original hero turkey puppet head from Thanks Killing 1. Uh, this is the only one that is uh, survived because there was only one hero puppet that we had that is, this is the one from the cover. This is the same puppet. The other ones that were made, I forget how much, I mean, we didn't, you know, again, we didn't have much money. So the latex that we were using to pour into the mold that we had made for this puppet, we would probably pulled out, I don't even know, five or six different heads. And let's just say one or two of them were pretty much unusable because you would get an air bubble or something, uh, or a piece of the mouth would, would fall apart. So what this one is, is this would have been the best mold or the best pour that came out of that original mold. The one that was the most intact that, you know, maybe had picked up the most bits of texture and all these little blisters around him. It grabbed all of that stuff the best. So this was the one that then had the most time and attention uh, into the paint job of it. And obviously I'm saying time and attention, but this thing is a very low budget rubber puppet there's no denying that and there really was never a plan to try and uh, deny that it looks rubber it's supposed to look <laughs> rubber that's the gag uh right here on the throat this was actually a paper towel uh that i took and dipped in latex and you can see it's starting to kind of crack and crumble there and you can see the paper because the actual, because you couldn't get this floppy skin, the look of like a, a turkey, you know, throat, turkey gizzard doesn't really, you can't get that with this pour. So the hard line of the puppet ends right there. And then this is just a paper towel that's kind of like 
jammed on there with liquid with liquid latex kind of gluing around it and then it's all painted to match to give it that soft look originally it had teeth and there's no teeth left maybe one is in there um those teeth all fell out during the making of the movie they're not even on the artwork anymore i mean it'd be interesting if you went back and watched the movie because if you see teeth in the puppet the more teeth you see, the earlier the scene would have been that we shot with the puppet because they would have all fallen out. Um, I mean, there's so much that, that I learned over the process of doing this, as janky as it is. For instance, the eyeball, if you look at the puppet like this, see how the eye has been glued in? It's kind of like it's looking, its eye line is basically down here where my finger is. You normally, you know, I... I if you have an animatronic, the eye is adjustable, but in our case, it's a fixed eye, it's glued in there. But what's interesting is that like, its eye really worked better from this low angle from here, because now you can see it looks like it's looking at you. But we never actually adjusted this, so that's just the eye's locked position for all of Thanks Killing. So when it's looking off, it doesn't, <laughs> it's, it's not accurate at all. Um, and so that eye, again, I would, I just never even thought about that at the time, about where you position that eye. Not that it would have mattered and made a difference at all, but it's just interesting. You can see it's kind of thin and floppy without a hand up in it, which, by the way, is very tight because you can see my hand compared to it. It uh, There's not a lot of breathing room in there, and that's why ultimately we made the puppets a lot bigger for Thanksgiving 3 when Troy Smith built those ones because this one was stretching, and that's why there's so much deterioration right here on this throat because the hand, the arm was going up, and it was just constantly ripping and breaking down here. All in all, it's actually in pretty good shape. I mean, aside from, I wouldn't want to put it on because I think it would uh, it would start to rip and break, but you know, it's cool. It's got all of the, uh, a lot of the blood on the mouth that would have been there from, I don't know if it was when it pulled out the heart from Darren or what scene uh, would have gotten that blood on it, but you can see it's still in the mouth there. The eyes are both still intact. There really wasn't a lot of repair done to it. Um, throughout the movie, so this really, really is pretty much the exact thing that you saw on screen. Minus the teeth falling out, there isn't any major alterations to it that were done. It's kind of falling apart here. You can really see the seam of the mold, because obviously a mold has got two halves. So you can see, you know, the crude line there that I didn't really know how to get any better at the time doing this. Um, did pick up some of the detail that you can kind of see here that maybe doesn't appear in the movie and there's really that this side of the face uh is really the one that we shot it the most from um like that as opposed to that and the reason for that is that that eye just kind of sits in there different i didn't want it to be a totally uh you know mirrored image of either half of its face but ultimately this one kind of sits in a little bit more and it didn't pop out the way that that eye pops out and that's just a better better image for it um so you do see this half in the movie it's just not as prominent and it's not the the half that's you know on the poster uh because you can see that is right there that's the image of it but it's obviously facing that direction so like i said we flipped this uh this image so that you could get that frame there for it um so this is the the original screen used turkey puppet from thanks killing one the puppets from Thanks Killing 3 are very different. Um, they may not seem it when you, I guess, at first glance, but they ultimately are a very different design and construction, coloring, all of that. So this is definitely the, uh, the prized uh, possession of the box. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that was fun and interesting. It certainly always means a lot to me to, you know, go back through the treasure trove of these types of things because each one was kept for a reason, you know, and the thing to keep in mind is that we were very young when these movies um, were being made and when they came out. And so as a young filmmaker who, you know, obsessed over horror films growing up, to see something printed in Fangoria, to see your movie getting a DVD release or to see anybody even watching the thing, always you know meant a lot so for better or worse regardless of the content of these movies and what they're you know the the tone and and the corniness of them it always just meant something that there was people watching a movie that we made and so all of these things i think are little indicators of 
of that over the years and what uh, you know was special to us. So again, thanks for watching and I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday.